Hi, welcome back. I hope you're all really well. Today I wanted to talk about some items that I struggled. I watched a lot of videos on all of these things and I just found it extremely, extremely overwhelming. But along the journey, I figured out a lot of things and I just wanted to share it with you. Now I'm going to talk about big ticket baby items. Big ticket items are items that are big size wise and price wise especially. I'll give you some examples of these items. First and foremost is your car seat and then your travel system. I'll explain what this is later. If you are going to set up a nursery, then all of your nursery furnitures will be considered as big ticket items like a wardrobe, a changing table, a cot. There are cots where you can use from right from newborn all the way up till the baby is a toddler, up till five years old. Um, those things are all expensive. And then you've also got your baby monitor. You've got um, a lot of technological things like um, a changing pad that actually measures the weight of your baby and all of those things. I think it's the hatch system and then you've got like lighting system. Um, a lot of these are essential and some of these are only luxury. I didn't want to buy any of these things at all initially. I didn't want to look for anything online, but my family kept pestering me for a list. They wanted me to make a baby registry item so that they can buy from it. I never wanted to make a baby registry item list from the very beginning. I just felt awkward, you know. I make a list of all of the things that I want for my baby and I give it to people and get them to buy things. It's it's not very nice, is it? If people want to give you something, they give out of love and out of joy and they want to bless you and they want to bless your baby. So it's up to them what they give. It's a thought that counts, you know, not what you expect from them. Um, but I still had like a few lists which I didn't tell my family about. I registered on a few other baby um, item websites because I wanted to treat that as my shopping basket. Every time I saw a video or heard of an item which may be useful for a baby, for a newborn, whether it's big ticket items or regular items or whatever, I put everything in the basket. I literally chucked everything in the basket and then I would go over it over the weekend and try and do my own research and you know think if I need it or not if it would be practical for my use or for my necessity or not but I never really got far with that at all it was just extremely extremely overwhelming it was too many options um, too many different price ranges a lot of conflicting reviews and information it's just too many things. I just didn't know what was essential and what wasn't. I've got a lot of family and friends who've had children. Everyone's experience is different, isn't it? So they've explained some of the things that they have used. I've not necessarily asked anyone specifically because Lakshman and I are somewhat high-tech kind of a people. We like things which is a little bit high-tech. We like things which are different and we like to kind of have a um, newer model and latest fashion and all of those things. And our usage is very different from other people's usage. I mean, I'm five feet five and Lakshman is either five six or five seven. So whatever we get has to be suitable for both of us. Because I'm petite, I can't handle and deal with anything which is extremely heavy. And it's fine for Lakshman, but it won't be fine for me. But I can't be relying on him all the time. I want to be able to be independent if I want to take the baby out for a walk, for a stroll, when he's not around or, you know, things like that. So I just wanted to look for things which I could use easily, whether it's going out or whether it's at home. Eventually, I just gave in and I made a baby registry list. So it was a very random list at first when I started off, but I kind of differentiated it between um, big baby ticket items and also essential newborn list. I will talk about the big baby ticket items today and the essential newborn baby list I'll talk about it in another video. If I talk about both today it will just be very overwhelming for you and we'll be here forever talking about everything. So like I mentioned big baby ticket items are the big ones and the expensive ones. I didn't want to buy this so early at all. Usually people would only buy it in the third trimester and I only wanted to buy it when I was around about my third trimester but I kind of wanted to do my research beforehand so I knew what I needed and you know what kind of brand and quality and everything that I wanted. Every time I started looking for any one of these items, it was just extremely overwhelming. I mean, like I mentioned, there was 
too many brands, too many options. And I still felt that it was very expensive and I didn't understand what I was getting for that value. So I happened to see this ad on Mamas and Papas but they spoke about virtual personal shopping experience. When you go into Mamas and Papas when the store is open, you can book an appointment for a sales assistant to guide you with all of the items that they have. But now, because of the lockdown and the pandemic, they were doing it virtually, which is another reason why I was putting everything off. Because I couldn't go to the shops due to the pandemic and I'm supposed to be shielding and everything is in lockdown. None of the shops are open and all of those things. I just couldn't physically see it. Some of the items that you buy for your baby, you have to be able to physically see it, touch it, you know, try it yourself, get that hands-on experience and everything before you buy an item, especially like a car seat and a pram and a travel system and all that. Um, but because I couldn't do all of those things, I just didn't understand what I was getting myself into. I eventually booked an appointment with mamas and papas. This appointment, um, the timing was so impeccable. It was just a week before Black Friday. I didn't plan it that way at all. And I was around about 20, 21 weeks pregnant as well at that time. So eventually I had this appointment with Mamas and Papa sales assistant online. It was an hour long appointment where I could see her, but she couldn't see me. So it feels as if you're making a regular call, but it's a video call with them, like a FaceTime thing. So she talked me through a lot of items. She described a lot of things to me. She demonstrated how to use the prams and the push chair and all of those things, explained about the size and the weight and the usage. She gave me so many insightful information that I didn't know at all. The first item that I was looking for was a car seat. Lakshman wanted the car seat that was um, able to rotate 360 degrees because we saw an ad on Maxi Corsi, I think if I'm not mistaken on Instagram or Facebook or somewhere that you can turn the car seat 360 degrees and it sounded really interesting and fascinating and it sounded very easy to use, very convenient also, you know, you can fit it in and then turn it around in the car so that it's rear facing initially and then you can face the front when the baby is old enough and all of those stuff. So I told her I'm interested in this, have you got anything like that at all? And she recommended the Sidebacks Cloud C. So when she was explaining about the Cloud C and the features in it, she explained that you can recline this baby seat. And apparently, Cybex Cloud Z is the only um, car seat that you can recline. You can't do it while it's in the car, it's against the law, but you can do it when you take it outside the car. For example, if your newborn falls asleep in the car seat while in the car and you've reached home, you can lift up the entire seat, bring the baby back home and then recline it so that the baby is not in an um, upright position, the baby is lying flat. She explained to me that you cannot have a baby upright for more than 90 minutes and I was really surprised. Where are you supposed to find all of this information? How are you supposed to know all of these things? From everything that I've read, I haven't even found that before. And then eventually I did a little bit of digging and then I found out some people say that you can't have a baby upright for more than 90 minutes. Some people say that you can't have a baby upright for more than two hours. This is because the position that they are in when they are upright they can't breathe properly, their lungs are not fully developed, you know. So when you put them upright, they will not be able to breathe normally. That's why it's important that you lie them flat. She also explained about the entire travel system. When I first called her that morning, I had no idea what each and every part was called. I didn't know what a carry cot was, I didn't know what a push chair was, I didn't know the difference between a car seat and infant car seat, size zero, size I, and you know the safety regulations and all of those things. All I knew is that in the UK, it is by law that you must have a car seat when you're bringing the baby back home. In fact, some midwives actually walk down to your car and they check and make sure it is according to the safety regulations as per you know UK rules and regulations and everything. Um, if your car seat is not appropriate or if you don't have a car seat, your baby is not coming back home with you that day at all. They'll keep the baby in the hospital and you need to go and get an appropriate car seat and come back. Um, if you're anywhere else in the country, I don't know, you need to read up your regulations. So she explained the entire travel system to me um, and she introduced about a bundle. So when she first told me about this, I thought it was a bit too expensive. In fact, after the sale and after a price match discount, it was £850. It was an 8-piece set, okay? I give you that. It was the Okaro 8-piece set. 
Okaro is a mamas and papas in-house branding but it's a combination with the Cloudsy Cybex as well. The Cybex Cloudsy car seat alone along with its ISO fixed base that's the one where you can fit it to your car permanently and then you clip your car seat into it and you don't need to use um, a car seat belt if you have the ISO fixings for it. That alone would have cost about £400 without any discounts whatsoever. Even with the discount, I think it was reduced by about £50 or something like that. That's all, not more than that. But this set that she was talking to me about had the Cybex Cloud Z car seat, the ISO fitting, it had the push chair, it had the carry cord, it had a coffee holder, it had a foot muff. A foot muff is something that you would use um, probably during winter, you know, in rainy days or cold days or whatever to keep the baby really snug and warm and nice inside, you would use a foot mark. It's like um, an extra piece of layer that you have that you put into the carry cord or the push chair itself. And then it also comes with a diaper bag. The other diaper bag was actually £100 if you were to buy it individually. I know you can get diaper bags cheaper elsewhere, but ultimately when I looked at a cheaper bundle, um, it didn't really match up to this at all. The travel system especially was really really good because you can handle it with one hand even. You can fold it and unfold it with one hand, sometimes maybe two hands, but it's just easy. It's not difficult. You don't have to fidget with a lot of settings and everything. It does have a lot of settings, so you can use it as rear facing or front facing. Um, you can use it in different heights and all of those things. But that's what I really needed. You needed to be able to use it for different heights. I am 5 feet and Lakshman is 5'6", five, 5'7". Five, so I need something for my height, not too overwhelming and something which is suitable for Lakshman also. So I thought this was very, very suitable for both of us and for all of our needs, especially um, the thing that sold it to me was that it was all terrain wheels, you know, you can use it in any situation um, Whether it's normal tar roads, whether it's in a shopping complex, you're going out walking, hiking, mountain climbing Not like I'm going to do any mountain climbing or hiking or trekking, but still it's suitable for everything In fact, this um, trolley, the push chair thing is the one where you can handle with one hand it's so easy to maneuver around with just one hand because the front two wheels are 360 turning and it was just so convenient when she was pushing it and when she was demonstrating it to me I thought it looked really really good so that kind of sold me but I had this nagging feeling that it was a bit expensive after I had finished my appointment with her I went around searching I spoke to a few other people in different companies there was this baby and toddler show that I spoke to as well um, everyone does everything online nowadays, you know, because of the pandemic. So I spoke to them and they explained everything to me and everyone recommended this for 850. This is not an expensive range at all. Um, it's definitely not one of those cheaper ranges also. It's a middle range, but it was a very good deal because of the discount. So I decided and I paid my deposit for it. Mamas and Papas were even so good to say that they're able to hold it in store for us and then they'll deliver it closer to the time because I haven't got space at home. I don't want everything crowding around at home in boxes and all of those stuff. So I asked them if it's possible and they say, yeah, why not? Not a problem. They'll just deliver it. Even if I have to move later on, they'll just deliver it to me um, wherever I have moved, you know, as long as I keep them updated and they'll have that delivered and done. Another important um, big ticket item, which is not necessarily part of the travel system, but useful for travel, is a baby carrier. I have a feeling Lakshman is the one who's going to be carrying the baby a lot more than me after the baby is born. So I chose the Ergo Baby 360 Omni. Apparently it's like the award winning thing. Um, you can carry it in four different directions. It's got very good back support and front support. The baby can be rear facing in the beginning and then front facing when he or she is older. You can carry the baby on your back by the side. It's easy enough for you to handle as a single person. I've not tried it at all yet because everything was virtual that I saw but she showed it to me and she demonstrated everything to me. So I stuck with that because it's so important. You're carrying the baby and you're carrying it on your back. You have to make sure you spend the money on the right item. Um, it's not appropriate when you want to use it at home because I feel like it's a little bit bulky if you were to be using it at home if you want to say do laundry or you know sorting out things while your baby is stuck to you 
um, that maybe I need to start looking for something else I haven't really thought about it but this is one other thing that I've ordered and the next important thing I want to add is a feeding bottle and a sterilizer set you never know what kind of a baby you have uh, the baby might have colic the baby might have uh, feeding difficulties might be a fussy baby you just don't know right you don't know what to expect sometimes you need the bottle sooner rather than later uh, sometimes you don't need the bottle at all but you need a sterilizer set for a newborn baby for sure especially for pacifiers for you know small tiny things that you use for the baby and all of those things so mamas and papas recommended the um, anti-colic sterilizer set from Tommy Tippy. The actual price was around about 180 if I'm not mistaken, but because of the discount, it was only 81 pounds. The regular sterilizer set was about 60 or 70 pounds, but because this is anti-colic, even if your baby is not colic, you can still use it. But once a baby is born, if you find out the baby is colic, then you would need an anti-colic set. And this is an appropriate one. This one has mixed reviews a little bit, but I find that the deal is so good that, you know, it comes with a sterilizer, it comes with a warmer, it comes with eight bottles, I think. And then it comes with a cleaner and um, the pick and a lot of other things also. Another item which I feel is essential is a baby monitor. Now these things is definitely personal preference. There are a wide range of um, baby monitors. You have got really basic ones where it's only audio and then you've got really high tech ones where you can even detect your baby's breathing, heartbeat, um, any issues, movement and all of those things. I didn't want one that detected heartbeat and breathing. I definitely didn't want that at all. All I wanted was a monitor and um, the audio obviously i want to be able to see the baby when i'm not in the room while the baby is sleeping i was keen on getting an external monitor that's another thing that you have to think about a lot of the baby monitors that comes with wi-fi connection and it comes with an app on your phone where you can actually view it on your phone is far cheaper than a baby monitor that comes with an external monitor on its own i did my thinking and i did my research on it and i figured I don't want an app on the phone because if you have an app on the phone you can only look at it while you switch on that app you can't be looking at your baby while you're doing something else on your phone or you can't have your phone on all the time to monitor your baby while your baby is sleeping so I fixed my mind that I wanted an external monitor so I can have that monitor by my side wherever I am whatever I'm doing I just want to be able to know that the baby is sleeping or the baby is awake that's my most important thing and i definitely didn't want anything to detect whether the baby was breathing and the heartbeat and everything it just makes you super super paranoid with all of those things so i went for one it's the angel cam monitor i think it's ac 157 or 156 or something it's one of those um thing with touch screens and everything it wasn't far too expensive compared to everything else i didn't get it because i wanted the touch screen i just got it because it was 10 pounds more expensive than the non-touch screen the range is really good it's like 20 250 meters actually i think I'll put the details on the screen for you and I'll leave the links of all of these things that I talk about as well. Sleeping category is very important. When your baby is a newborn, you cannot leave the baby on its own in a nursery, in a cot or somewhere else. You must have the baby next to you. So you need a bedside crib. Some people are comfortable having the baby on their own bed. I am paranoid. I am terrified of having a baby on my bed. I don't want the baby between me and Lakshman at all. I'm just so worried that I might turn over or Lakshman might turn over and crush the baby or hurt the baby and that sort of a thing. So I looked for a bedside crib and i decided on the snooze spot four i looked at three different things or maybe even four so it was between the maxi cursi the um chico next to me magic the snooze board and there was something else i don't remember what it is i'm a first time mom i've not had any experience having a baby next to me at night waking up in the middle of the night and everything but looking at all of those descriptions and how it works um this one the snooze board was really easy to zip down by the side and pull it next to your 
bed and have it clipped onto your bed the breathability the function of it the material of it and everything looks really really practical it's got different heights that you can adjust according to your bed so i measured that and it fit really well with my bed that was definitely a selling point for me it looked easy enough to clean it looked practical enough to use and it was really simple there were no a lot of extra bits or fussy things that you need to fuss around with when you're trying to zip it up or down especially and have it attached to your bed and all of those things. I've seen a lot of people talk about all of these bedside crypts not being an essential but you need to think about yourself whether that's something that you want or not, whether it's something that you're going to use or not. Um, I think a lot of people started off with they didn't need it because they were co-sleeping with their baby um, on their own bed and they were fine with it and everything they're comfortable with it then get rid of it give it away to someone else or you know sell it for sure you can definitely sell off all of these things second hand those are some of the big ticket items that i bought at the moment purely because the sale was on and i made a very good amount of savings on it look out for these things and look out in many many different websites and everything a lot of people give you a lot of deals and the prices are quite competitive at the moment so you'll be able to find all of these things i think when the items come and when i use it for at least six months i'll probably make another video and review all of this item so you know whether it's really essential or not whether it's really useful or not i hope you found this useful and let me know if you use any of these things or if you think you are going to buy any of these things as well be sure to subscribe next week i will talk about newborn essential list that i've made for myself that was a game changer i'm not gonna lie that definitely was a game changer and i'll share that with you next week so i'll see you again next week bye